Well, good morning, church. We continue with our daily Devo today. We're in Genesis chapter 25. Genesis, the word means beginning, has shown us some amazing things. The beginning uh, of time, the beginning of the creation of our universe, the creation of man, the uh, creation of nations. And now we see in Abraham the fulfillment of the creation of what will be a great nation. In chapter 25, we go into Abraham's life and we see some things that a lot of people miss who don't read the Bible. As a matter of fact, a great little trivia question would be, how many sons does Abraham have? And everyone would say two, right? You'd say Isaac and Ishmael. Uh, but if you read this chapter, you see that Abraham takes another wife and has six more sons. So Abraham has a total of eight sons. And as you enter into this chapter, we kind of see that. Remember when it was written by Moses, they knew the nations around them. And one of the things Moses is doing is connecting some great nations to Abraham. Even though God was promising he would be one nation, Abraham really is a father of many nations. And these six sons, they're named. And then Moses gives the connection to the tribes, the nations they would have known then. And then it talks about Ishmael. And of course, we know how great that is because the Arab people today can connect their genealogy back to Abraham. And so we know how large that people group is. But then the chapter focuses back on the chosen one, Isaac, the one in which the line of Christ, the nation of Israel would be built, but the line of Christ would go through the plan of redemption from the world. The fall that happened in early Genesis, the plan is working that would ultimately bring our redemption and the redemption of the world. And in that, remember that um, Rebecca and, and Isaac now are husband and wife, uh, and it talks about them having a child. A matter of fact, uh, we know he gets married at 40. He's 60 now when he finally has a child, uh, and he doesn't have one. He has two. Now, in that day, they didn't have ultrasounds and all that, so they really didn't know twins were being born until they were born. Now, she knew there was some disturbance that later she would categorize, or Moses would, as a, a battle that Esau and Jacob, even in the womb, even before they were born, were battling with one another. And Esau is born first, and, and then Jacob's grabbing his heel. And there's a prophecy that though he's the younger, he would rule over the older, which was unusual in that day. Now, I don't know if any of you have twins. I've had some cousins that were twins. And the one that was born only a few minutes earlier loved the Lord over the fact that he was still the older one. And it was like that, except for that day, being firstborn had some real practical applications, which we'll talk to in a minute. And we see as they grow up, we see kind of a dysfunction in the family. Now, I love the Bible because it's so realistic uh, and it doesn't paint perfect pictures of its heroes. It paints both their, their pluses and their minuses. It shows their, their greatness and it shows their faults. And in this, we see a dysfunctional family. We see that, that Isaac uh, loves uh, Esau because he's that manly man and he's, you know, and he's out and he's shooting and he's bringing game home that he enjoys eating. And, and, and Jacob, he's more of a, of a homeboy. Uh, we'd say a mama's boy. Uh, he's around there. And so um, Rebecca forms this great relationship with him, which you'll see later some of the damages of that. But because of that, it creates even more of a separation between the two of them. And we see this story uh, that's so significant, a time in which Esau has been out hunting. He's exhausted. I mean, I would say he has low blood sugar. He comes back and, and Jacob has made this incredible, wonderful smelling soup, stew. And Esau says, give me somewhere, I will die. Now, he wasn't going to die. We can see in Esau's character there that he's kind of exaggerating. But Jacob sees an opportunity. He says, I tell you what, I'll give you the soup if you sell your birthright. Now, in that day, understand what the birthright was. The older child had the advantage in that they were kind of the priest of the family, the carry on the line, but also they were given the birthright. The birthright was there. They get a double inheritance. So in this case, where you have two children, the inheritance would be split into three parts and the oldest child would get two. If you had nine children, the inheritance would be broken into 10, and the oldest child would get two shares. When you only have two kids, that literally means that Isaac uh, is going to uh, give to Esau, the firstborn, two thirds of everything he has. 
But here's Esau, and again, his exaggeration. What does it help if I die, if I have the birthright? So yes, I'll give it to you. And he eats this bowl of, bowl of stew, but as his stomach is filled, anger then fills his heart. Because he realizes what a foolish choice he has made. And rather than taking responsibility for the choice he made, his anger goes on Jacob. You should have never done that. You took advantage of me. The only advantage taken in that really was Esau's lack of character. Now, I think so many things happen in life. And one of the ways we can really grow in our, uh, in our life is to be able to take responsibility in areas that we blow it. Uh, it's, just, it's just normal when we make a bad decision to look at every reason why and blame every person rather than look into ourselves and saying, why did I make that decision? I remember reading a book, having to take a psychology class, and it talked about what they called the responsibility factor. And they looked at people, people who felt like they were victims to life. They always pointed to life and pointed to things that had happened to them tended to not do well economically, emotionally, relationally. But people who were the opposite, no matter what happened in life, the more they looked and said, yeah, that's bad, but I made the choice. They're in a tough marriage and they look, yeah, but I chose that person. They don't like their job, but yeah, I, I, I chose that job. The more they could look, not even to solve the problem, but realize I am where I am because of the choices I made, how they did better financially, they did bad, better emotionally, they did better uh, relationally in every area. And when I read this, I couldn't help but just read that part, how Esau would not take the responsibility that he went out without food. He came back hungry. He saw a need and he sold his birthright. But just maybe today you could look and say, is there something in my life that I'm blaming others that I need to look to myself and say, where do I have responsibility? And accept that and move forward from there. Guys, so glad you're part of the Daily Devo. Continue tomorrow our Daily Devotion Challenge.